Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop, and today I'm going to show you how to use and install Lightroom presets and brushes. Um, the set that we're going to be working with today is the new Infusion collection, and this is the photo that we're going to be using to edit. Um, so, I already have these presets installed, but I'm going to show you how you would install them on yours. So, the first thing that you're going to want to do is download your product from your email or from your account on my website, and then you will extract that folder, the zip folder, and inside you will find these three things. You'll find the folder for infusion brushes, for the presets themselves, and for the instructions. And these instructions will help you if you don't feel like finishing this video, so feel free to close it out and read those if you prefer. So, um, right now we're going to work on the presets. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this little plus sign right here on your preset tab. And, oh, nope, I lied. Sorry, that's not what we're going to do. We are going to right click in here and hit new folder. I just right clicked anywhere, hit new folder. And then we are going to call it whatever we want. You can call it MB Infusion. You can call it, I don't know, anything that you wish. And then just hit create, or, I already have one called MB Infusion, so we'll call this one MB Infusion Presets. And then hit Create. And now let's find that one. Here it is right here. So, and you see that even when the arrow is pointed down, there's nothing in there. So what you're going to want to do is right click on that um, folder name, and you're going to hit Import. And then since I already have them here, what you can do is um, you'll navigate to wherever you have these presets saved. You'll select them all, and then you will hit open. Now, I already have the navigation set here, but you can use this down arrow um, to find yours, and then just hit open. And then it'll take a few seconds, but they'll pop up in that folder. Maybe. Okay, so there they are. Now it added some stuff on here. We can go ahead and um, scroll down and remove that. These are all of the presets. There's quite a few of them, so it might take you a while to scroll through here. Um, if you scroll all the way down below your presets window, you'll find a history window, and you can, oh goodness, you can go all the way back to your import, and it will show you your original photo and then you can get started with editing. And so here are your presets. Now they've been installed and um, Lightroom will automatically save them. So if you put them in here, they're saved to Lightroom. Uh, now for the brushes, what you can do is you'll go to develop up here in this tab. You hit develop and you will hit maybe edit. No, you're going to go to edit. Sorry. More of a Photoshop user than a Lightroom user, but we'll, we'll learn together. Okay, then you're going to go to edit preferences and then when this pops up, you are going to hit Presets right here, and then you're going to hit Show Lightroom Presets Folder. And this will pull up the navigation on your computer, and you'll see the Lightroom folders already highlighted, so just hit that, double-click it, and then you are going to click on Local Adjustment Presets. Now this is where your brushes go. They don't go in the same place as presets, so if you've put them there and you notice they aren't working, this is why. You're going to want to click your folder where you downloaded your stuff, and you will open the brushes folder, select all of these brushes, and then right click, hit copy, and then you will just right click in here in this folder and hit paste. I've already pasted them there, so I won't hit paste, but that's what you would do. You'd hit paste, and then they're in there. And then after that, you can close out Lightroom and restart it, and then your brushes will be installed. Since I've already done that, I'm not going to close out Lightroom, but that would be your next step. So then, if you want to play a preset, you automatically just find, see the preview when you hover over them. So you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like when you add it to your image. You can see there's lots of different ones here. There's black and white. There's um, enhancements for black and white. So after you run the black and white, if you want to enhance those, you could run those too. Um, and then there's all of these different color lights. So you can find ones that work best for your photo. Obviously, the color lights are going to look best on outdoor images. Um, but feel free to get creative and crafty and see what you like and what you can come up with. So here's a bunch of different lights, um, and then here's are the enhance presets, and these ones basically adjust your brightness, your exposure, um, things like that. So what you can do is you can 
you know, brighten the highlights, brighten the highlights times two. You can do um, any of these, just hover over them and see how it affects your photo. Um, and then there's the matte section. These all have the number two after them because I already have these presets installed and this is the second time I've installed them. So it's doing that so not to confuse the presets and give them a different name. But yours won't have the, the two after it unless you've installed them twice as well. So. Uh, but yeah, if you want to choose one of these actions, or presets, I'm sorry, you simply click on it and then it'll adjust your photo as well. And you can add more on top of it. Um, these matte ones, if they say matte in front of it or if they say enhance, each new one that you click on will undo the action before, the preset before, I'm sorry. So if you hit overall brighten and then you hit overall brighten times two, it will undo the last adjustment and add the second one instead. And it doesn't really make a difference on um, overall brighten, except that, um, well, I mean, if you go back to the first one, it'll reduce it again. So this is a sm like a smaller setting and this one is stronger. So if you go to the stronger one and then you hit the top one again, it's just gonna go back to that softer setting. I hope that makes sense, I'm kinda rambling here. Okay, so let's do it on um, a matte preset. We'll hit matte boosted and then it will show us the edit. We already hit that one so that's why it's not changing. Um, and then let's say that you decided, okay I want matte darken. It will change the matte. Not only will it darken, it will also add the matte in other areas. Um, so if these ones say matte in front of them, they're not quite as stackable. They'll kind of erase the last settings, if that makes sense. Um, but if you hit a matte action, a preset, sorry, and then you hit um, one of the enhance ones, they stack on top of each other because they're basically different sections. You can hit enhance, color, light, matte. Kind of confusing, I know, I'm sorry. Um, but feel free to just keep clicking and stack them as you wish and if you make some changes you don't like, just come in your history panel and click the last step or you know two steps back or whatever one you like. I'm going to go back to the import. Um, that's basically how you install, how you run these presets on your photo. There's also tones and tints down here and these all will stack on top of each other. Uh, the matte plus tone, these ones are kind of like a full edit, so you can run these on your photo to get different looks. Um, but now let's move on to actually editing the photo, now that I'm sure I've confused you. Um, let's use the brushes. So this is Lightroom 5, and if you are in an earlier version, some of these things you might not have. Um, I'm not quite as familiar with earlier versions of Lightroom, so I don't know exactly uh, what you would have, but this is Lightroom 5. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit this adjustment, adjustment, sorry, brush, and oh, I already had it up, so I have to click it again. And then what you're going to do is you're going to see where it says effect, and you are going to select that menu, and then you can grab a different effect. And so the one I'm going to use is hazy golden light, and then you can use your left and right bracket key to make your brush bigger or smaller. Um, you can also use the size slider here instead. You can make it bigger or smaller. Uh, feather kind of affects how soft the brush is. If you do that one, it's more of a straight, strong edged brush. I'm going to undo that, so I'm going to go back to import the last step in history. And then you can increase the feather, and that makes it more of a softer, more subtle brush. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So feel free to play around with these again. Uh, and then flow uh, um, basically tells you how many times you have to go over a certain spot for it to show up. If your flow is lower, you have to go over that spot more than once in order to make it be strong. Again, hope this makes sense. Sorry if I'm confusing you. Um, I went back to import in my history panel, so those two little things disappeared. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is my feather is going to be set to 100. I'm going to adjust the size later, but I do kind of want to keep a low flow. I want to paint this light in very subtly. So what I'm going to do is make my brush larger, and again, I'm using my, um, my right bracket key to do this. And then I'm just going to start painting in from the top of the photo. Um, and you can increase your flow if this is too soft for you and you're kind of getting frustrated. Um, you can increase your flow so it paints on stronger. And so then you can paint it anywhere in the photo you like. I want it to kind of look like it's coming from the top. And then like the center of the photo is the lightest. And then I'm going to leave the front in shadow a little bit. So you just paint this in anywhere you want it. I'm going to increase my flow a little. This is kind of going slow. So yeah, the lower your flow is, the more believable and subtly you can paint the light in. If you just want it super strong, go ahead and increase your flow and, and see what you think. 
So that's painting in the light so far. And you can hit this little button right here, which will turn it on and off so you can see your changes and your adjustments. And so now what I'm going to do so I can apply a new brush is I'm going to hit, oh, sorry, I forgot to explain. On your keyboard, if or you can hit the H key. And if you notice these little pins show up on your photo when you use your brush, um, you can just hit the H key to make them disappear. Or if you decide you need them later, you can make them reappear. And the good thing about these little guys, if you hit the H key to make them reappear again, you can hover over them with your mouse and it will show you where you painted. And then you just click and slide your your mouse and you see over here it's reducing your amount so it's making it lighter or stronger so if you want it to be super strong drag it all the way over to the right and then if you want to subtly soften it you just drag it over to the left so I hope that makes sense I think I say that a lot okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce it a little bit more that's a little bit too strong for what I wanted so again I'm just clicking right on that button and then dragging my mouse sideways or you can just hit this amount key here and you can reduce it that way. There you go. And if you want to get rid of these little pins, I know if you make a lot of brush adjustments, they pop up everywhere and they're kind of obnoxious. So just hit that H key on your keyboard and they'll disappear. So now what we're going to do so that we can apply a new brush adjustment is hit new. And then that one saved the last. And now you can click in here again to choose something new. I'm going to choose brighten and because I want to kind of brighten her face up a little here. And then I'm going to make my brush smaller using that right bracket key. And I'm going to click over here in my little display. I'm just going to click right on her face so we can zoom in and get a little bit closer. And you can drag this around if you need to lower it or move it around. So now I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger because we've zoomed in here. And for this one, I want to make my flow pretty low. I'm going to make it 24 or so. And I'm just going to paint this over her whole face at first. And let's see if this is brightening. I think it is, but maybe not. Okay, yeah, it's brightening. Okay, and so then what you can do is you can make your brush smaller again. and You can increase your flow or something like that, or lower it if you wish. And then you can paint over the areas of her face that you want to selectively brighten. Maybe just over her eye, maybe under the dark spots under the eye, um, right under the brow bone, wherever you want to paint. I don't want to get too in depth with this so it's not taking up too much time. But you can just paint in over those highlights to enhance them and kind of add some drama and contour the face. Uh, let's see, it's painting in, painting, painting. Be careful over the whites of the eye. Sometimes you can go a little bit too strong and then they start to look a little alien-esque. So just be careful with that. Um, and then you can paint some more on the other parts. Just wherever you think the highlights would naturally fall. Um, let me drag this down a little so I can paint onto her chin. I should have used a different brush first, but we can always go back and forth. That's the good thing about these brushes is you can add a ton on wherever you want or you can add as little as you want. Um, you have full control. Okay, so that's good for now. Again, you can turn this on and off and see your changes. You can see how you've brightened, how you've kind of added that glow to her skin. And then hit new and then we are going to grab another brush. And this time I'm going to grab um, porcelain skin. And this one kind of smooths, but it also preserves some of the details. Um, so I'm going to increase my flow a bit here and then just paint this on. And you'll see that kind of darkens a little bit. So you can, you can do this before you brighten. That way um, you can adjust for anything that it might have darkened a little bit. There we go. Yeah, you can brighten again after this too. So it helps to do this one first if you need it. That way you don't have to re-brighten after you've already brightened. It kind of, it won't mess up your work that you did. And so again, I won't take up too much time, but you just paint this in wherever you want it. You could do some over her lips if you want to just smooth those out a little bit. Um, it kind of takes the detail away from something as, as strong of a focal point as lips. So just be careful with how much you apply. Um, again, it's all personal preference. You just add this in wherever you want it or however you think looks good. Okay, so then you'd also want to do any other parts of the skin that are showing. To save time, I'm just going to do the face really quickly. Um, and then hit new when you're finished. And again, you can turn this on and off to see your changes so far. And then you can hit new to grab another brush. And I'm going to grab Brighten one more time um, and then just sweep a little bit more over her, the highlights of her face. And anywhere else that you need to brighten. 
And be careful of the strength of your brush. You don't want it to be too strong when painting these on. I think mine might be a little strong, but I'll just go with it for now. So we're not taking up too much time. So just painting these in again where the highlights would fall on her chin, on her nose, on her cheeks, that kind of thing. There's a little dark spot here on her cheek. I'll paint that in with some brightness. And so, yeah, you want to be careful not to go too overboard. You don't want her to look unrealistic. But um, again, you can lower the amount later if you wish. So then I'm going to hit new again. And this time I'm going to grab one of the, the lip brushes. I'm going to grab pink matte lips. And then with this one, I'm going to make my brush smaller just so I can fit in right there on her lips. And you can make your flow higher if you wish. I'm just going to kind of do it subtly and then just go over the spots um, if I want to do it more than once. So, yeah. And, I mean, of course, you don't have to do something like this. It's, it's just for fun or for to add a little bit of color. You can also use these brushes to paint color into the background if you wanted to, like, make one of the flowers look nice and pink. Um, it doesn't just have to be for lips. You can use it for whatever you'd like. And get creative with them. You can use it to paint like a sunset look onto the sky if you wanted. Um, the possibilities with brushes are so endless. I'm so excited to be able to use these brushes in Lightroom now. Okay, so yeah, just paint it in wherever you want and stop when you think it looks good. Um, there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit new again. Make sure you keep hitting new, otherwise you'll just adjust that spot and that brush. Um, and I'll use eye popping this time. Again, you don't have to go this in depth with your edits. I know Lightroom is supposed to save you time and stuff, so you don't have to go all super in depth like this. I'm just showing you how in depth you could go, the possibilities. So I'm going to make sure my flow is low on this one. Eye popping can be kind of strong. You can paint it over the eye. You can paint it directly onto the iris. And it just kind of sharpens and brightens and adds some contrast at the same time. So. You can use this on lips, you can use it on hair, you can use it on, you know, pretty much anything. It's great on those highlights on the face as well. It just kind of gives a little boost of contrast. You can use it over the lips if you want, wherever. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. Um, I think that looks pretty good. You can keep going with this. Um, you can add presets over the top of your brush adjustments. Again, the possibilities are endless. You could keep going for days if you wanted to. Um, and you can hit new again, and there's more light brushes. So if you wanted to play around with different lights, you could hit sunset light painting, rosy light painting, any of these, um, and you can work on that. So let me close that out. And so again, you can just turn off this little thing, and you can see how you went from start to finish. And you might need to brighten the face a little bit more. Now that I turn it on and off, I see it's a little bit uh, uneven. You can just turn down the flow a bit here and then brighten the whole face. Uh, let's see. There we go. And then you can you can brighten areas of the clothes so that she matches her face. Her face is super bright and nothing else is. It might look a little weird. So feel free to add these in wherever. Um, go crazy if you want or subtle if you don't. Um, and again, these little buttons will help you turn it on and off. And then also hit the H on your keyboard and you'll see everywhere you painted. And you can click on those brushes and it'll show you where you painted and you can reduce by dragging and sliding and increase as well. So lots of fun stuff with Lightroom. I'm really excited to have all these options available and maybe they've been here for a while and I just learned them, but who knows, I'm excited. So I hope you have a great time putting all these tips to use. Um, if you have any questions or any trouble with anything, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com and you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy.